Hello and welcome to another video. So today is one of my favorite types of videos and that's where I'm gonna provide some feedback to an archer that sent their shooting videos in to get some feedback on their you know, technique, what they can improve on, that sort of thing. I love these types of videos because this is essentially why I started the Online Archer Academy. This is why I made the website you know, free for everyone to use so that archers where maybe they can't often get good quality coaching or enough coaching can improve their technique and then I'm really really happy to be able to you know provide some feedback on a specific basis on these videos as well so that's really really good. Now actually Shrishti sent some, Shrishti is the name of the archer who sent the videos in, she's been working for a while on her technique and she's been using the website to improve bit by bit already and that's really really great to hear and now she wanted some feedback specifically on the videos and see how she can progress to the next level. So the first thing I'll do is let you sh see the videos of her shooting and then once we've had a look at those, then I'll go through the good points, the points that we can improve on, why these points are happening in the way they are, why you know we need to improve on these areas and why they're limiting the shot and then also finally the solutions. So how exactly can we work on these areas, not just, you know, outlining them but not giving much solution. So hopefully I want to cover all four of those points today and let's have a look at the videos first. So I've got the videos on this iPad here and I'm going to go through and show you on the screen as well some of the areas that I really like. So to start with, the posture is decent. So if we skip here to the end position, the posture is decent. It's not too arched to the back. We'll come back to that a little bit more later, but the posture is decent. You can see here, if you look on this point of the elbow, the elbow line around the bow here is really good. It's not too far out this way. So that's really nice. I really like that. Then also, when Shristi is drawing the bow, when she's uh, shooting, there's not too much swaying along the line this way of the body. The body isn't moving around too much, which is good. Um, there is a little bit, but that's a minor thing maybe for later on. Uh, another good thing I like is, as you can see here, if I clear the previous marker, you can see here the string line here is clearly to the right of the bow. And that means that the bow is slightly angled left and it means that from her point of vision, obviously her eyes is, is here, and that means from her point of vision, when she's looking through to the target, at that point in the shot, the string is to the right, which means she's more able to keep this arm and wrist flat rather than having it left and bending it like this. So that's really good, I really like that. So that's nice. Now, when we're coming to the release as well, the elbow direction is good around the body, it's not too much down, so I like that. And then if we move on now to another angle, we can see here the setup position is pretty nice. The elbow, arm is all straight, you know, there's not an overly kinked wrist or anything, and that's good. So I like that. And both hands are coming down at a similar speed. So they're both synchronized. And then coming into anchor, the anchor looks solid. The string position on the nose and the chin looks good. And there's clearly movement around the body of the elbow to keep that expansion. And then on release, there's a decent release and maintaining the direction with both sides. So that's good. So there's some really good points here. Also, you can't really see it in this angle, but it looks like the posture in terms of this way looks good. So the vertical posture looks good. And perhaps you can see that a little bit better from here. So you can see the posture, the body looks pretty straight and it's not you know, leaning to the target, leaning away from the target, that kind of thing. So that's good. Also, you can see here, another thing I like, which I'll show you is, if you watch here, there's not too much upper traps tension, which is good. So the shoulder appears to be, even when the elbow goes up here, there's a tiny bit of using the upper traps muscle, but not a lot. So that's quite good. So I'm quite happy with that. And overall, the general structure of the shot, the general shot cycle is really good. And now I wanna go through the areas that we could improve. Before I do that, bear in mind, 
I'm going to be, in this video, I'm going to try and be very, very picky and I'm going to try and point out some very minor areas that maybe some of you guys watching at home, they might not be as applicable because they're quite minor, but I really want to show Trishti the arch of these and I also think that even if they don't apply to you right now, you can find some benefit in looking at them and maybe in the future there's something you're going to look at and it's just going to give you a bit more understanding of why they're important. So that's what I want to look at now. So I'll clear that. And now we'll go back to the previous view and have a look here. So one thing that I would definitely work on is I mentioned the posture is good, but it is a little bit arched in the back and you can see that. So it's pretty flat here before the arch is starting, before Shrishti is lifting the bow. And then as you lift up the bow here, it's very important to keep that back, but there is a slight arching there and then doing the alignment there is a slight arching in the back so that's something I would look at. Second thing, look at the position of the bow at the set position. So when the bow is here, notice how the bow is quite far. If you draw a line, this is obviously the line of the body on the left, the longer line, and the bow is quite far in terms of the distance between the two. So this distance here is quite large. Ideally, you want the bow a bit closer to the center line of the target. The reason for that is, I'll kind of explain that a little bit more, but the reason for that is it's creating too much of a need to swing the bow over and it's limiting the alignment you can get. So notice how it's a little bit far to the right and then when Srishti, when you come up, then you swing it to the left, obviously, and then come in. So that's one thing there. I'd also note that when you do this alignment, when you come up from here and do the alignment. If you watch the back, so it's pretty flat here, and now watch the back, and as you come up, do the alignment, then the back arches. And so it's that key point, and that's what I've mentioned before, the two key points of where people lose their posture is when they lift the bow from the foot and when they try and align the shoulders, so that's really key. So that's what I wanted to show you there. Now if we move to the release here, there is a slight collapse on the release. So watch around this area. Very, very fine here, but as you can see on release, if I just play frame by frame, just the moment of release, there's movement of the body. Can you see that there? So you can actually see the direction isn't maintained exactly correctly and there's a slight loss of tension around the, mainly around the bow shoulder it looks like, but also a tiny bit on the draw shoulder side and a tiny bit with the elbow. So you can see that it's just on release there and I'll show you that from a different angle a bit more clearly. So you can really see this more clearly from this angle here. So here, if you watch the bow shoulder just on release, You can see how there's that collapse and watch the bow arm as well. You can see it's not quite strong there. So this is an area I'd definitely work on. While we're here, you can also see there's a significant amount of string drag on the chest guard. And this is something that improving the posture would help because not arching the back as much would really help with this. So the string drag is actually, sometimes archers with string drag might uh, kind of subconsciously try and collapse the bow shoulder slightly to prevent having so much string drag. So that could be a, a thing there, but I'd mainly, I'd try and improve the posture first to work on that. And we do need to improve the bow shoulder here. So I wanted to show you that. I also wanted to show you how with the uh, head position through the shot, if we go back here, it slightly moves. So as Shristi, Shristi, as you're coming into anchor, there's a tiny bit of movement forwards towards the string. And again, if you notice, it's when the string is touching the chest guard quite a bit, and then you're thinking, okay, I don't wanna kind of drag it in too much more, and then you're just slightly greeting the string. So this is an area to work on for sure. And this is gonna to come together with the posture, because ideally we don't want that head movement basically. And then we can see we've seen the release before. So those are some key areas there that I wanted to show you, particularly with the bow shoulder. And now I'll show you from the back. 
So what you can see here is at the back, it looks like the bow shoulder is a little bit high and a little bit, rather than being in a good position here, it's a little, tiny bit, tiny bit rolled over. And this is what causes that slight collapse on release. So when you're releasing here, if you watch here, the bow shoulder, and then on the second time, watch the hand, you can see just on release, the body comes off here. See that on the bow shoulder? So watch the big circle now with the bow shoulder, and then now watch the smaller circle with the bow hand. See the moment of release. See how there's this movement before the arrow has gone? There's that slight movement, so that's a slight collapse there. And this is caused by the position of the bow shoulder and the alignment. But I'll get into why that's happening and what to do to improve that in a minute. But I just wanted to show you that from this angle and you can see that slight, I'll clear the markers, you can see that slight, looks maybe slightly high and tiny bit rolled over in terms of the bow shoulder here. Now, when we're drawing as well, you can see if you watch the bow hand in this area, watch the path that the bow hand traces here along this line. So it comes down, it comes down, it comes down, and then as you're coming in, it comes down, and then it goes back up there. So ideally, we want to be lowering the bow hand and effectively the sight. We want to be lowering the sight to the gold. We don't ever want to need to move it upwards. So I definitely try and eliminate that. You don't want to dip below the gold and then have to come up again. So that is definitely something that will make it easier to come to anchor a bit more confidently and then be able to expand without you know, trying to make sure the sight is coming back up to the gold. So I try and eliminate that. Now, those are some of the main areas I wanted to go over. And now I want to go through step by step what's happening and why these areas are happening and then give the solutions as to how to work on them basically. So now, what exactly is happening in the shot and why are these areas doing this? So if we go back to this angle from six o'clock, you can see here the start of some of the issues with the bow shoulder height and some of the chest slash posture issues. Because the bow is slightly to the right, it means that when Shristi, when you're coming up, you are kind of limited in your range that you can get the alignment of the shoulders. So there's two things here. It's because the bow is slightly right, and the reason you've, you've put the bow right is to get the flat. I'll put this down. The reason you've put the bow right is to get this flat draw arm here. So you've put it here. You've effectively, say you're in this position, and then if you have the bow here, it's a bit more likely that you're gonna kink the wrist and you're not gonna get as good a position. So you've moved the bow to the right and then that way you can get this a bit more flat, which is understandable. But it means that when you come up, you then have to do that with the hand and move across. And then also it limits the amount of rotation you can do with the shoulders. Ideally, we would want to be able to, when you come up, you'd want to be able to come into line with the front shoulder and come around it rather than kind of just doing this. So the reason for this is basically the shoulders are too much in alignment too early. So the shoulders are maybe here, and that means in order to get this flat, you have to bring the bow too far to the right. Then that causes the swinging. That means two things. You can't come up and rotate as much and get your shoulder alignment because the shoulders are more in alignment already. So the result of that is you feel like you have to do even more alignment and then to get that, you lift the chest and arch the back slightly. Does that make sense? So because actually it's counterintuitive, because your shoulders are too much in line, that means that you try and get extra alignment that's not possible and you end up arching the back which then causes a couple of things with the bow shoulder slightly coming up, like I mentioned, also the chest contact with the string and the chest guard, and also later on in the shot, possibly that slight collapse it will be having an impact on as well. So this is a key thing here, and basically having this start position not quite right is causing the arching of the back, some of the chest clearance, some of the alignment, not having quite the rotation as you come up, and it's having an impact on all of those points. So it's really, really important. 
Now I'll get into a minute as to the solution, but as you might imagine, it's, it's to do with opening the shoulders slightly to the target, even if you've got square stance. So it's not really dependent on the stance, but just having that open shoulder can help slightly. So I'll get into that in a minute. Now, as we're having a look as well, from this angle, we can also see with the bow slightly to the right, we can also see as Shristi, as you lift the bow, have a look at around here, have a look kind of the pelvis area and the hip and have a look through the shot. So what you can see is there, there's a slight movement of the pelvis and then as you lift, see how the pelvis the kind of the bum sticks out a little bit and the pelvis moves as you do that alignment of the shoulders and then as you shoot crucially watch see there how the pelvis moves there it's almost like uh, moving kind of under the body slightly and isn't quite stable during the shot and then on release as well so this is one of the reasons why the back is slightly arched and then that then has a cascading effect to the shoulders and impacts the shoulder position and the movement you can get. So this is really important in order to build the solid foundation from the ground and then work on the areas at the top. So let's now look at the solutions. So what I'll do first of all is get a bow and demonstrate with that. So the first thing is the set position. Before actually the set position, we want to make sure that the pelvis and the core is engaged and make sure that the pelvis is not moving. So to do that, obviously we, as I've said before many times, make sure the core is engaged, almost like you're about to be punched in the stomach. So a slight engagement there, but then also you can't quite see this on the screen. So I'll put an overlay. You can also slightly feel like you're twisting the feet outwards. So the toes away from each other and the heels towards each other. The feet are not moving on the ground. They're not physically moving, but a slight twisting. And what that does is that helps the glutes activate and then slightly uh, position the pelvis better and slightly put the pelvis under the body, straighten the back and tilt the pelvis into the right position. So you can see that on that picture I put, but that's going to help. So if you rotate that, that feeling of slight rotation on the legs, then keep the core, that's going to help maintain through the shot. Then at the set position, you need to imagine if you're, imagine if you're here at the set position, then once you've done the legs, rotated slightly, engage the glutes, engage the core, then you must keep that through the shot. You can't come up and then let, let yourself lose that and then get your back in an arch position again. So you must keep that. Now, when it comes to the set position, before it might have been something, might have been something like, maybe like this. So you can see how the shoulders are quite in line to the target here. So they're fairly in line like this, and then when you lift, it means you have to go quite far to the right and then scoop over to the left. So what we want to do actually is just simply just open the shoulders to the target. So rather than having the, you know, the bow like this and the shoulders very much in line, you actually want to just slightly, you can slightly open the shoulders to the target. And then when you lift the bow, you can get this side straight here. So you can get the arm as you can see, you can get that straight and you don't need the bow so far out to the side to you. Does that make sense? So just going from having them too much in alignment to opening the shoulders slightly, then gets you in a place where you can come up, keep the draw side straight as you can see, but then when you lift the bow, you're not going to need to swing the bow to the left or to the right. So that's really important. I'll demonstrate now with a band and show you the full movement of that. So with the band here, you can see if I have the band too far to the right and the shoulders too aligned, then when I come up, I'm going to have to move over quite a lot like this. Whereas if I slightly open the shoulders, so rather than being here, I open the shoulders slightly and then now I can get this side, this side of the draw side is straight. And then when I come up, watch the bow hand, it will be fairly uh, consistent. It won't need to swing over to the left too much. So, see that there? So see how there's a small bit of movement. There is a small movement from the right to the left, but only a little bit. And actually a small amount is good to help open the shoulder here and get this bow shoulder alignment. 
because as I said, you want to be, you actually want to be open to the target slightly so that when you lift, I'll do it in slow motion, so that when you lift, you then can rotate and get your alignment at the crucial point and not have it too much in alignment to start with and then have nowhere to go. That means that when you come up, you're gonna to want to do this to try and get more alignment that is not there and it will just compromise your posture and kind of ruin some of the work that you've done earlier on in the shot. So have a look at the positioning of the bow there because it's really important and then make sure to keep the posture and that will also help the chest guard clearance with the string, which I mentioned before. That will then also help the head position and furthermore, Keeping the posture will allow you to feel what the head is doing through the shot and make it less likely that you'll move the head. When you lose the posture, it's very easy to lose the feeling of the head position because you've lost your reference, you've lost your solid foundation. So if you can keep the posture, keep the core, then when you move the head a tiny bit, you're more likely to feel it and so then you're more likely to prevent yourself doing it keep it in the same position. So the, all these things cascade upwards. Then having that alignment when you're coming up and being able to you know, come up and actually use some rotation of the body to get your bow shoulder alignment, having that is really going to help this bow shoulder position and you won't feel like you need to roll it over slightly and overdo it effectively to you know, get into that position. So that's gonna help also with that. It's also gonna help with you coming around on the draw shoulder side and perhaps not needing quite as high a draw elbow, which is something that Shrishti mentioned to me. Now, on that subject, I want to show you the difference between what I'm talking about and what I would like. So if you look again at the video of Shrishti here, that's where she's coming up and she's too much in alignment and doesn't have a, a distinctive point here where the bow shoulder is coming up and aligning. So if you look at the video there, you can see that. Compare this to someone like Kim Woo Jin, you can see there's definitely an area where Kim Woo Jin comes up and does the shoulder alignment on the front shoulder. There's a distinctive area where you can see the alignment of the upper body. And this is what's missing in the video of Shristi shooting. And this is what's gonna take that alignment to the next level. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and really I wanted to demonstrate that very clearly so that A, Shristi can improve, and then B, you guys at home watching can really see the difference there between what is clearly, Shristi's technique is clearly very, very good already, very, very good, and I've been picky here, but I want to show you the difference between that and really improving to the next level as well. Now, when it comes to one of the areas Shristi mentioned to me, which was the draw elbow height here, here is actually, here are two pictures that Shristi sent me from before and after. So before she was using the website uh, and you know not using it to improve her technique, her draw elbow was high, too high, and she didn't like how high it was. And she was trying to basically lower it and improve that part of her shot. So you can see here the before and after, there's definite improvement as to the elbow height and it's in a much better position now. But crucially, notice the uh, kind of shape and position of the wrist. So in order to get that draw elbow a bit lower, Shristi has effectively has relaxed the back of the wrist a bit and lengthened the hook slightly so that it's not so much of a kind of a grabbing fist, it's more of a relaxed hook, which is really good. So it's, it's kind of got, gone from that where the elbow is high and then straightened that out and lowered the elbow there. So that's really improved the elbow height and a lot of that has come from the forearm and the hand. So going forwards, to improve that elbow height a little bit more as well, I would work on making sure the hook is good in terms of making sure the string is somewhere near the groove of the middle of the top finger, groove of the middle finger, and just in front of the groove on the bottom finger. In the pictures and the videos, it looks it's slightly hard to see, but it looks like maybe the middle finger is a little bit deep and the hook is a little bit too deep still in terms of uh, the amount of tension that's being put on and maybe the precision of the middle finger. So I'd work a little bit more on this hook and connecting that to the elbow in more of a straight line rather than just, a t it's just a tiny bit elevated still. That's a very minor point, but that will also help that tiny, tiny collapse on the draw elbow that we saw here 
just on release where it was not quite perfect coming around. So just some of these minor areas are something to work on. And you can see that obviously, Trishti, you've improved massively just by you know working on your own. So I hope this video can give a bit more feedback and then help you improve those areas even more. So that would be really, really good. I'd love to see you know the progress in a, in a month or two months or whatever. I'd love to see how you're getting on with this. And uh, yeah, it'd be really, really great to see that. So I hope this video has been useful to Shrishti. I hope it's been very useful to you guys as well at home watching to you know see some more detailed areas and see how you can improve these. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, smash that like button. If you didn't, I guess hit the, hit the dislike button and let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video and thank you for watching.